Shakur Stevenson is a world champion boxer who is just a couple fights away from superstardom. Some people think he's a future GOAT, others think he's just a good but overhyped fighter. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how skilled Shakur Stevenson truly is. Let's get into it. So the way we'll break down how good Shakur really is, is by breaking down his strengths and weaknesses. So let's start off by breaking down his four biggest strengths. First is his ability to control the distance. And before we dive deeper into that, let's get a good understanding of what I mean by distance. I like to define distance as the space that you could be furthest away from your opponent, but still hit them. That is your individual distance. And Shakur is a master at controlling distance in a fight. There is no better example of this than Shakur's fight with Oscar Valdez. Shakur gave Valdez an ass whooping all night long while keeping him at the end of his distance. Valdez was lunging, bowling, and getting countered all night long because it was so hard for him to reach Shakur. The way Shakur is able to control the distance so well is due to these three simple things. First is footwork. Footwork is the most simplest yet most effective way to control the distance and Shakur has really good footwork. He uses these small little half steps to go in and out of range but sometimes he mixes it up by just hopping directly out of range especially when he's on the bad end of an exchange but he does this one little thing that i don't really see anyone else do that separates him from most boxers when it comes to distance management so most boxers when they step forward they usually bring their head and their body along with that step forward but i've noticed that shakur tends to take that step forward by extending his leg out there first without bringing his body and most importantly his head forward with the step this small detail gives Shakur an advantage because it allows him to trick his opponent into thinking Shakur is closer than he really is, which can entice your opponent to throw a punch, which Shakur could counter a lot easier because he's further than he actually appears. Another advantage of stepping like this is that since Shakur is further than he appears, he has time to see and react to incoming punches, which allows him to have such good defense. The next thing that Shakur utilizes that allows him to control distance very well is his lead hand probes. Probes are when you extend your hand out or throw somewhat of a soft punch, not with the intentions of hurting your opponent, but more so to occupy space and measure distance. Shakur probes a lot with his lead hands, specifically probing jabs. Shakur has a great, quick, sharp jab, but he loves to throw mainly probing jabs to occupy space, measure distance, or control your head. He also uses that lead hand probe as a bait to get you into that lead hand battle, right? To then open up a space, so, you know, get that, get that backhand in, or you know, hit you with that body shot. Yeah, that's a little mind game that Shakur be doing with that lead hand. From all his fights that I've seen, that's how he mainly uses his jab. This works so well for him because he knows how to mix up the speed and rhythm of it. He keeps you on your feet guessing with that lead hand. He'll throw like three probing jabs in a row to get you used to that and then mix it up and throw a hard fourth jab to start off a combination. Or he will just flat out just probe, probe, probe and start the combination of the probe since you're used to him not doing nothing with that probe. The third thing Shakur does really well to manage distance is he is very good at utilizing feints. Feints are a tool that should be in every fighter's arsenal and Shakur uses them very often and effectively. A feint is simply the act of starting the movement of a specific punch but just not going all the way and throwing that punch. This is an amazing and effective tool to use because it keeps your opponent guessing and helps disguise your next move. It also makes them hesitate a lot because now they're thinking, oh shit, what is he about to throw? About to throw that jab, blah blah blah, then you fake the jab, go down to the body, you know what I'm saying? Now you occupy find more brain power you force them to use more brain power and that takes their mind off other shit you see what i'm saying this shit is really a high speed chess match like if you know you know the casual fans just see motherfuckers throwing hands and fighting and shit that's all they see but if you know this shit is high speed chess at the highest level feints also help you read your opponent because it will show you how he'll react to a certain move for example you think that jab now you see it was he about to block that jab was he gonna parry that jab head movement etc so now you can plan accordingly oh he was gonna block it I bet now I'm gonna throw that jab down to the body. You feel me? But he's going head movement. I bet throwing that jab hook catch him with that head movement. You feel me? Chest match. So the fact that Shakur uses feints really well help him control distance because it now makes your opponent think twice before advancing and just overall hesitate a lot more, which gives you more time to you know control your distance and do what you gotta do. The next strength Shakur has is his ability to manipulate his opponent's guard. But before we continue with that, if you enjoying this video, make sure you hit that like button to show the algorithm this is a video worth promoting what this basically means is that Shakur is really good at making his opponents move their hands or him just flat out doing it himself moving their hand out the way to open up different attacks 
for example, Shakur is the first person I've seen do this exactly this way. Like I know for a fact other boxers have done it, but he does it in such a way where he like sticks his lead hand out like kind of like a jab and a probe at the same time, but he leaves it right in front of your gloves so like you can't see. He blinds you and he just sticks that left hand right into your body, into your solar plex. And that shit is just so effective the way he does it. I've never seen nobody do it like him. It's like his signature combo damn near. He then takes it a step further and mixes it up with the straight left to the head when you're used to it coming to the body. Like it's a simple combination but it's just so effective the way he specifically does it. He also sometimes mixes in this Lomachenko-esque guard manipulation where he will just flat out pull your hand down to sneak a hook around or just a punch to your head. This guard manipulation and those head probes and head control he uses make him a very fun crafty fighter to watch if you're a fan of the sweet science. The third strength of Shakur is his combination punching. Although Shakur is mainly a counter puncher and often sticks to simple 2-3 punch combinations, he has the ability to get fancy on you and mix up those fancy ass high low vice versa combos which basically means he'll throw punches to your body and to your head where each punch opens up the next punch for example this combo where he throws a straight to the head hook to the head straight to the head hook to the body Chakor is really creative with his punching combinations which ties into his next strength the last strength i'm going to list because i could go on and on about this guy all day is basically a combination of everything i broke down and a lot more which is his fight iq so fight iq basically means your knowledge and understanding of fighting with your ability to translate that to the ring and most importantly your ability to make adjustments according to what your opponent is doing pretty long definition but rewind that and make sure you understand it because it's very important to succeed as a fighter shakur has a very high fight iq and he's still young so it's only going to get better with time and experience he has shown he has a high fight iq and understands the sweet science very well just based off his fighting style alone for example think back to earlier when i explained how he steps different than most fighters by just extending his lead leg out first without bringing his head forward with him which makes him appear closer than he really is you don't do that by accident that is purely intentional so shakur knows exactly what he's doing to outsmart his opponent another example of this is also an example i gave earlier which is how he uses his lead hand to bait his opponents to commit to open up openings for himself so now that we know what's so good about him, let's get into his three major weaknesses. So the first and biggest weakness that Shakur has is his lack of punching power. This man basically has pillow hands, guys. And that's my favorite fighter I'm talking about. But bro, this dude can't punch, bro. In my opinion, this will be the one thing that will hold him back from ever being the complete package as a fighter. Because those other weaknesses we're about to get into can be fixed. But punching power is one of those things where you're either blessed to have it or you're just shit out of luck and you're not gonna have it no matter how much you improve your punching power it's a shame too because if Shakur had that tank or Ryan Garcia punching power there's no doubt in my mind that he would go down as a goat the next major weakness that Shakur has is his lack of head movement besides pulling straight back from punches Shakur almost never ever utilizes head movement to make his opponents miss I personally think this is due to his very bladed and upright stance which makes it more difficult to utilize all the angles and slots of head movement compared to if you're just a little more squared up you know what i mean if shakur utilized the whole spectrum and all the slots of head movement he would be the best counter puncher ever in my opinion because he's already good extremely good at counter punching and all he does is just pull back and smack you in your face like that's it now imagine if he consistently countered off of head slips to the side too like bam slip your fucking jab uppercut right there or some shit you know but all he does is just pull back and he's smacking everybody so you know if it ain't broke don't fix it but that would definitely make him a lot better also the biggest reason Shakur has such great defense even with that low lead hand that he uses is because of his insane athleticism and reflexes his defense is basically dependent on him being able to see and react to all those punches coming which have to do with his reflexes that is not a good foundation 
foundation to base any part of your style off of because as the great Roy Jones showed us, once you start to age and those natural gifts like speed and reflexes start to fade, those technical holes in your game will be exposed. It's better to be like Bernard Hopkins, the man with like 50 still beating world champions because he was just so technically sound. So now that we went over Shakur's strength and weaknesses, it is now time for me to tell you how great and skilled I think he really is and give him a rating from 1 to 5 stars. I personally think Shakur is an amazing talent and tremendously skilled fighter. In fact, since the first time I seen him fight a couple years ago, he instantly became my favorite fighter because I just never really seen a fighter like him before. This dude is the shit. He will be that guy. I believe it. As of the time of me recording this video, if I had to give him a rating between 1 and 5 stars, I'd give him a 3.5 stars. I believe Shakur's ceiling would be like a 4.5 stars because that lack of punching power is important and I, like I said earlier I think that'll keep him from ever being the complete package which would be a 5 star rating. Let me know in the comments how many stars you would rate Shakur Stevenson. Let me know if I'm bugging with the 3.5. But keep in mind Shakur is still very young and has already accomplished a lot by becoming a multiple division champion and is still improving with every single fight and still has a lot to learn. I definitely envision him becoming pound for pound king one day he definitely has the skills to do so some even call him the next Floyd Mayweather of this generation click on this video right here if you want to learn more about what made Floyd so great